Hi there, hope you're having a lovely day so far. Well, as we are all aware, government jurisdiction in pretty much all Australian states and territories is for children to be homeschooled in term two. Now, coupled with this, there is an increasing number of parents opting to keep their children home during the COVID-19 restrictions. So with all of these changes uh, to our children's access to education, I've got a question for you. you know, as a parent, are you concerned about the impact COVID-19 is having um, on your children's education? And, you know, are you possibly uneasy about the prospect uh, of children not learning enough uh, while their school is closed? And or possibly are you anxious about um, children sort of falling behind when they do return? Well, if your answer is yes, then you're definitely in the right place. You know, homeschooling in the current environment is a really delicate combination of a multitude of circumstances. And it's only natural to be, like, to be concerned about all of these things that we're being confronted with at the moment. However, there is some good news if we just shift our perspective. Now, have you ever thought that it's possible that children are learning crucial life skills at home at the moment, just as much as they are um, academically via their homeschooling? Well, to talk to us more about this perspective is our special guest, Mandy Dimitriatis. Now, Mandy is an award-winning, highly regarded, passionate director of learning at Makers Empire. And Mandy has developed programs for the Australian government's Department of Education and created a custom curriculum um, for schools in the US, in China and also in the UAE. Thank you so much for joining us today, Mandy. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. Thank you very much for having me, Rachel. Wonderful. It's, it's, I'm very, very honoured to have your, your time and your expertise in this. You know, and parents all around the world really are, are now being asked to assist teachers uh, to observe their children's education through homeschooling. Um, you know, it, on, from, from the get-go, what um, comforting words of advice uh, can you, do you have to offer parents um, that could be of support at this time? Well, I think it's an extremely stressful time on many levels for us all, particularly for parents who are trying to juggle the stresses of their lives with having their children at home. Um, so I think more than ever, it's really important for us to be kind to ourselves and kind to each other as we work our way through this crisis. And it is a crisis. None of us expected this to happen. None of us want to be going through this. So let's acknowledge that it's a crisis. And I've been thinking about effective ways to manage any crisis. And I think there are three important things to keep in mind. The first thing, whether it's a, a personal crisis or a global pandemic like we're dealing with now, the first thing is to make sure that we stay as calm as we can and keep ourselves safe. So for the COVID-19 crisis, that means um, following social distancing um, guidelines, listening to what our health authorities and governments are advising us to do. And we're doing a really good job of that. So as parents and as people, we should feel pleased that we have made a really good start to managing this crisis. And so part of that, keeping our children safe, is that they're staying home from school, whether that's a jurisdiction to do that or parents are making a, a, a decision to keep their children at home during this time. So keeping safe, number one. The second part of managing any crisis, I think, is to be really clear on the important priorities and feel okay about leaving everything else for now. And the important priorities now are, of course, physical safety and health, but also our mental health and our emotional well-being. Our children can't learn effectively if they're living in fear. They can't solve problems logically if they're feeling threatened. So that's number one. That's what we should be focusing on at the moment. And then the third part of any crisis management, I think, is reminding ourselves that this is a temporary situation. We don't know how long we're going to be needing to um, teach our children at home, but we do know that things will get back to some kind of normal and they'll be going to school again. So um, keeping in mind that this is a temporary situation, what we need to do is get through this as best we can, but also think to the future and plan ahead so that our young people are in the best possible position to get back to their, their lives once things go back to normal. Mm -hmm. 
Um, speaking more about, I guess, your perspective on, on all of this, there, there are a, a lot of distractions at home, um, which I guess can take the focus away from what kids um, should be learning um, during their homeschooling um, and as part of the national curriculum. Now, from your point of view, you seem to think that this isn't all too bad. Um, now, as a disclaimer, um, we, we, are, we are saying that the, we're not discounting the importance of um, the national curriculum. It is crucial important that they are learning um, effectively via distant learning but this is actually just putting another layer um, and actually uh, of comfort for, for parents um, ab about um, children and their education so can you tell us a little, little bit about your perspective of this yeah so of course when our children are going to school their teachers are following the Australian national curriculum or the New South Wales syllabus or the international baccalaureate whatever curriculum the school follows um, and th uh, that's all well and good um, as parents we think about the curriculum as having subjects like maths and science and English and so on but every one of those curricula that I just listed also focuses on capabilities we have wonder wonderful curricula in Australia that focuses on the types of capabilities that our young people need to thrive and survive in the 21st century so running alongside things like maths and science and English are these capabilities and yes it includes literacy and numeracy and I capability but it also includes personal and social capability how do we cope with everyday life how do we communicate with others how do we get along with other people also things like intercultural understanding how do we interpret what's happening around the world through in different places understand different cultural experiences and ethical understanding how, how do we um, make sense of the fact that our scientists are busy making vaccinations what are the ethics behind that how does that all work so there are many things that are actually in our curriculum that can be part of children's experience now and those sorts of things those capabilities lend themselves to the things that families are doing anyway um, cooking together gardening together solving talking about financial literacy as they work through these uncertain times together playing board games all of those sorts of things um, don't seem like learning because they're not sitting in a classroom but they actually are focusing on developing really important skills that are not so far removed from the, our children's curriculum experience at school anyway Mm -hmm. um, I would love to take a couple of paragraphs um, out of your article, which we are going to speak more about in a moment, but I think this sort of helps sort of give a little bit more perspective about your view on this. So quoting from your article, at the moment, children all over the world are learning how it feels when they can't do their usual activities. They are learning how the adults around them respond to stressful situations. And unfortunately, some of them will be learning to deal with grief. Our children can have so many positive learning experiences at home through everyday activities. So let's reassure parents that children will continue to learn and that they don't need to be teachers themselves or tie themselves in knots trying to be superhuman. So what I'm guessing from this, you're trying to say that children um, are learning life skills just as much at home as they are academically at the moment by their homeschooling. So could you please el elaborate a little bit more on this? Yeah. So the first thing I would say is our children are not going to stop learning. So let's reassure ourselves as parents, we're not going to do any long term damage to our children's education. Our children learn. Uh, we couldn't stop them if we tried. Uh, they're great at it. It's what they do. So they are not going to stop learning. Um, what what we can as parents help our children with though is how they learn and what they learn at the moment and we want those experiences to be positive we want them to be engaged in things that are interesting that they care about that are fun um, so that they keep learning that they keep having a great attitude towards learning and that they're ready to go back to their normal learning later in that article i, I listed some signs how to tell if your children are learning and some of them might be things that parents don't really want to hear because one was about making noise <laughs> because learning is noisy and one was about making mess because learning is also messy and what I meant by that is 
can you hear your children talking? Are they asking questions about what's going on in the world? Are they wondering? Are they discussing? Are they playing games with their siblings or other family members? It's those sorts of board games that are probably sitting in the, in the cupboards, those jigsaw puzzles, those are really great activities for learning a whole bunch of different language skills, problem solving skills, puzzling skills, those sorts of things. If your children are engaged in some kind of activity like that and they're talking, they're making noise, maybe they're making music, um, creating things, then that's a great sign. They're active, they're using, they're thinking, they're challenging themselves and they're, and they're having fun with words and ideas and and that kind of thing and the same with making a mess <laughs> there's so much learning that can happen in the kitchen out in the garden with junk materials um, designing crazy creations that those kind of learning experiences are really valuable and they're real yes great points now we published your article titled 10 ways to tell that children are learning effectively at home now you've spoken a little bit about the article but for someone who hasn't read it can you give us a little bit more of an overview about it and just tell us what inspired you to write it yeah well at makers empire we provide online learning activities for students with 3d technology we always do that so our learning programs can be accessed at home in any time but uh, with all of this talk about learning needing to happen more formally at home and on a larger scale we started to think about the products that we offer and what if those are being used at home by parents and not with that teacher input so much? So how can we support parents to see that making, making a castle in 3D is an important learning activity, but bearing in mind that parents are going through their own stresses at the moment. They might be trying to work at home themselves or have lost a job and have financial worries. So how can we make it easy, but also reassure parents that by doing these simple things, uh, that th their children are not going to suffer. In fact, they might even come out of this better off. Yeah, good point. And you know, from your point of view, how can we make sure our children are still learning from home without putting extra pressure on parents and teachers, of course? So I think we need to make a differentiation between um, what we mean by homeschooling. You know, I know of quite a few different families who have chosen to homeschool their children, homeschool their children, and have been doing that for some time. So those parents, those families, uh, made a really informed decision. They took time researching and thinking and discussing what was best for their children. They then... Um, did research and planned and got resources together and developed skills that they needed to make that work. Uh, they um, also don't do it on their own. Their children might not go to a physical school, but they belong to clubs and groups. The parents have support networks. Some of the families even access resources from their local school or, and check in with um, education authorities. So they don't do it on their own, own. And those families have also made decisions about other aspects of their lives, the way they work, the other activities they do, so that their whole lifestyle fits around homeschooling. So I think that's very different to what we're talking about now. I think we're talking more about crisis schooling. Yeah. Our children, um, yeah, our children um, can't go to school either because the schools are closed or the parents have made that crisis management decision to keep them home and safe. Uh, so we can't replicate a day in the life of, of an ordinary school day for our children. But we can, I, I have this concept of crisis schooling what we do want to do is make sure that our children are still learning feeling positive about learning um, in a way that parents can manage because every family is going to be experiencing this differently they'll have different resources different time availability different capacity to support students learning so i think that we need to make it okay whatever parents can manage is is okay the children are going to be fine mm -hmm. so um as you're just um, mentioning before about support, what support network should parents um, in, in this crisis education scenario that we're in at the moment, as you've just mentioned, what is your suggestion yep. for, for parents to be able to reach out, to be able to have support um, in the sense that they haven't had any formal training in, in what they're being asked to do, which is yep. not, to, which is, you know, to clarify, to not be a teacher, but to just observe their children in their education. Yeah. Um, but we, 
I mean, what, what support is out there for parents at the moment? So I think the number one place to look is at, with, at to the children's school. The children still have this network of education experts that have got their backs. I know lots of teachers who've been frantically thinking about how they're going to make this work for, for their students. How can they um, support their students learning at home? How can they support families? Um, I've got friends who are suddenly having to become really tech savvy because they're going to be connecting with their children at home. So I would definitely start with school. School is still there. They might, you might not be going to school, but school is still there providing support. And it, it will look different depending on the way the school's approaching it, but they are providing activities, giving suggestions. And I think that's definitely the first place to try. There are also a wealth of resources being pulled together and offered um, that a quick Google search, you'll find a multitude of things. The danger with that is it can be incredibly overwhelming. <laughs> we don't want to add more overwhelm to parents. And although most of what you'll find on the internet has been written in good, in, with good intentions, Intention. trying yeah. to yeah, giving um, kids good productive things to do and supporting parents. Some of it's also a bit opportunistic. So I would be wary with some of it. But my advice would be stick with what you already know and trust. So I know that, um, for example, I saw a, a dance school that were offering their dance lessons online. So the kids could still access their dance class. It just looks different. So if you've got things like that in your children's um, if ordinary life, I would start with those brands and those organisations that you you know and trust. Mm. Also, things like the ABC, they've put out a whole lot of content and packaged it in a way that can be held useful at home so i i wouldn't be looking for lots of things i'd be finding some things that i know and trust and could use at home um, and that's what we've we've done at makers empire we've packaged up um it's not new it's just an easier way for kids and parents to be working on our 3d design um, missions at home so stick with things that your kids are already doing at school listen to school and choose a few resources that you know and trust already Mm -hmm. So where would a parent start if they, for example, um, they've obviously got the best intentions for their child, but they just don't know where to start um, and uh, you know, they, they still have the support from the school, but they want to be able to add another layer to this. Um, what sort of keyword searches would they be putting into Google? Um, what recommendations do you have to help? So, yeah, so things like at home learning, um, coronavirus learning. I know that we've put together a bunch of challenges that to get kids thinking. Um, uh, because one of the things I also think is important is that we want our children to feel empowered, that this is this is not just something happening to them that they don't have control in mm -hmm. over, that they can actually make a difference. So one of the things that we've put together are some, some challenges like um, things to do with... Um, so, so how do you greet somebody uh, if you can't shake their hand? We still want to be friendly and um, acknowledge each other. So how, what could you invent where you can still greet people but not actually touch them? Those kind of things. So to get to that, that to help like that, um, at-home learning and coronavirus, COVID-19 um, COVID learning at home, school support, and definitely um, go through the education departments as well. I know that all of the state education departments have got landing pages where they're collecting these, these starting points. Yes, definitely. I think that, 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 I think that would be a great um, place to start is actually to begin with the state um, so the education department websites themselves. Um, and I'd love, love to be able to know from your perspective also, what are the most important things uh, for children to be learning during the, uh, the COVID-19 crisis? Well, I mentioned those capabilities before, but I want to be a bit more specific and give you my crisis curriculum. <laughs> and it has six subjects. The first is well-being. Um, through all of this, the main thing I want children to learn is that without doubt, they are safe, protected, loved. They have adults in their lives who are doing everything they can to get them through this and to, to have their best interests at heart. Their family, their friends, but then also their communities and government and so on. So that's number one, emotional, social well-being, uh, mental well-being. The second thing is that um, I want children to be well-informed. Um, and there are some good, some good um, 
age appropriate materials to explain the whole coronavirus situation to children uh, through ABC TV, uh, BTN. They've got some really uh, good information for children because I think it's important that children understand uh, what's going on in a way that they can can deal with. So access to good information, I think, is an important thing um, lesson at the moment. Um, I also, my next one is empathy. We're all going through this crisis together and we're all experiencing dif it differently. So it's a fantastic time for children to think not only about how this is affecting themselves, but how it's affecting the elderly neighbour next door who can't go shopping anymore. Um, I've, and I've seen every night on the news, there are fantastic examples of, kids, of families showing empathy towards other situations, delivering Easter eggs um, without having physical contact, things, things like that. So I've got, I think if we can come out of this situation with our children um, having a deep sense of empathy for how others are experiencing this situation as well as themselves, I think that we are going to be ahead. Mm -hmm. So my... Sorry, go on. No, no, no you, you go on, definitely. <laughs> okay. Um, also during this time, I would love children to feel resourceful and creative and imaginative. I'd love them to be um, imagining exciting new stories and characters and making things and finding new ways to do things, pulling out old toys and construction sets that they haven't used before. So that whole making your own fun, I think, should be uh, a subject. I also think helping and contributing in the family is really important, whatever your household looks like. And I, I said before that there's a whole lot of learning that comes out of cooking together and things like that. But also that feeling that you are, a child is contributing to the family unit, that they are doing this together and that they are giving something valuable that's helpful I think that's a really important lesson I know my niece who just turned 11 the other day and her present was at one of those Ikea uh, loft beds with the desk underneath so she and her dad have spent several afternoons assembling that and she's learned a whole bunch of <laughs> mathematical and engineering stuff that she wouldn't have otherwise but she's also helped she feels really satisfied with what she's achieved and she's done something together with her dad that she may not have done otherwise mm -hmm. So, and then I think um, this is a really good opportunity to talk to our children about critical literacy. And I mean by that, we're being bombarded by so many, so much information um, on television, on social media and the internet that um, it's, it's overwhelming and it's hard to know what to trust and what's, what's true and what's opinion so it's a great time to be talking to children about how can we trust that this is a good source of information how can we tell if it's fact and not opinion what can we do with this what what was the intention behind this so I think um, being critical about the information that's coming into our homes is a, is a good lesson um, yeah, so that, that would be my crisis curriculum, I think. Well, and, and the whole thing, so what I've just got from that is that if parents are concerned about their children learning from home at the moment, realistically, there is a lesson in everything, in every action, Absolutely. everything that they're doing at the moment from home. It's about the parent finding the, the perspective of how can I look at this particular situation be it whatever it is at home um, and, and finding the life lesson, um, which is still going to be needed um, uh, and, and is critical Absolutely. to their, their learning and development. So it's about just shifting perspective. Um, and in saying that, I'd love to know um, on that, what are your top 10 tips for keeping children engaged and learning whilst yep. at home? Yep. So my first thing is don't jump in and rescue them all the time. If children are saying they're bored, that's actually an opportunity for them to, to find their own fun, as I said before, to, to be creative, to be resourceful. And I know you're not going to want the children whinging all day that they're bored and there, there will be a point where you'll have to jump in, but let them go. Let them be bored. Let them find what happens when, when they haven't got a ready-made activity to do. So that would be my first tip. My, my second tip tip would be to get outside as much as you can um, and I know we can't do our 
most of our normal activities, but we still, most of us cats can still get outside. We need that fresh air. We need that physical activity or physical activity inside. Uh, because before when I was talking about not trying to replicate a school day, mm. I would hate for parents to feel like they have to sit their children down from nine to three doing um, schoolwork without, uh, with just a recess and lunch break, because that's not even what a typical school day looks like. Mm -hmm. Teachers provide a balance, particularly for young children and primary age children it's a balance of activity they teachers know that children need to be up and moving and having a variety of different things so build in as much movement and physical activity as as you can uh, my third one is reading just reading and i know that you probably haven't got access to the special leveled readers or class novels or well, you might have depending on what your school's doing but it doesn't matter what your children are reading as long as they are they're not going to forget how to read but they will um be able to to um have a whole lot of experiences by reading they'll be able to get lost in an adventure they'll be able to follow a recipe they'll be able to do lots of things so i would um have reading some kind of reading even the subtitles on a dvd or netflix <laughs> some kind of reading built into every day um, I would also, my fourth tip is, which I've already touched on, um, involve them in household um, activities. Everything has potential for learning, whether it's my niece building her bed or helping to cook dinner or repairing, hanging a picture or repairing something that's broken. All of those things are valuable learning experiences. They're life skills. They're also doing things together with others and they're, they're giving children that sense of, of worth and purpose. Uh, number five, which I've mentioned already, is listen to your schools. You still mm. do have those educational ex experts that have got your back. They're there and they're wanting to help. Um, so listen to them, follow their advice. Uh, I also would definitely say go with the flow. This is number six. Give yourself permission to not do everything the school says or, or not read on one day. If you're having a bad day or the kids have slept in, that's okay. Just give yourself permission to, to do what you need to do to survive this crisis. You know, our children are not going to stop learning. Not, not for one day in their PJs. <laughs> Um, and then use the resources that are out there, uh, things like I was talking about before on the ABC and behind the news, those kinds of um, collations of suggestions that education departments have put together and trusted sources. So use what's out there. There's heaps of stuff, too much probably, but use it. <laughs> <laughs> um, number eight is to think about how technology uh, can be helpful in this time and I know not everybody has access to devices and Wi-Fi but if you do think about how you can use that to stay connected um, and to, to bring another element to your children's learning. I've seen some beautiful examples of grandparents reading stories uh, or famous people, re authors reading yes. stories using technology and those sorts of things are, are a great way like um, we struggle with our children and screen time, but p what's happened in this crisis is that there's a whole really productive, exciting element of screen time, like listening to a story. I think that's fantastic. So think about technology beyond just keeping kids busy. Mm -hmm. um, and try and make life as normal as possible. Eat healthy foods, stick to your routines as much as you can. and, and Get, let your children have as much sleep as they can get. Those normal things and that routine are really reassuring and going to really help um, children survive and recover from this crisis. And my top number 10 tip is have fun, <laughs> um, which is, might sound um, impossible if you're really stressed out and you've lost your job and so on, but um, you're likely spending more time with your children. So get to know them, have fun, laugh, joke, wherever you can. That's going to be really a really great legacy of having to spend this extra time together. What a so that would be wonderful list. <laughs> Wonderful list, Manny. And look, we're going to have the link to your article, which has got a lot of that information within it too, with the introduction paragraph. But that is a very extensive and extremely helpful um, and insightful list 
um, to help parents. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, and also, and you know, as you are um, an experienced classroom teacher, it's really been said that you recognise the power of technology, as you mentioned earlier before, um, and in particular to enhance teaching and improve on um, educational outcomes. Um, and of course, with homeschooling, um, be it as it is at the moment, um, this has really become part of our everyday lives um, now as well. So can you just tell us, um, just lastly, uh, I guess your thoughts um, on, on this particular point in particular? Yeah, so the, the uh, fantastic thing about technology at the moment is it's our way to connect with others when we can't do so physically. So we can still talk to our teachers, our grandparents, to experts. And there's a whole bunch of different ways really, if, accessible to most families. So using technology to communicate, number one, I think that's great. And also I said before about um, the, the, the issues we have of worrying about too much screen time. And my personal concern with screen time is when it's a, a consumer role. So it's about children watching stuff that other children have made. They're playing a game that other people have designed for them to play. So it's about them consuming, consuming, consuming. But what technology can also bring to learning is to position children as creators and inventors. So I'd be looking to use technology for children to make stuff, to to make stories, to make films, to make um, 3D designs in the Maker's Empire app. So if that, um, to distinguish between good screen time and not, not bad screen time, but, but effective learning screen time, is your children making something? Are they responding? Are they using their imagination? Are they creating? Or are they just getting stuff given to them? So my two things would be, use the power of technology to connect with people and use the power of technology to get children creative and making stuff. Mm -hmm. You've shared an incredible amount of resources and information um, that's going to help um, Australian parents um, today. So thank you. If you were to summarise, I guess, your key points um, for, for anyone to walk away and to, to get from this chat today, um, what would they be? Uh, my first thing is we will get through this together. Our children will be okay. They will not stop learning. Parents are not going to, to do any long-term damage to their children's education. They will be back in school following their curriculum. So please be kind to yourselves. And in fact, realise that you are giving children experiences that they wouldn't normally be having. So there might be some positives. So be kind to yourself. Um, look at the positives and also um, value value the learning that's happening around you at home with your children and use use the resources that are out there to support you there are still experts that have your back through this and there are lessons in every one activity every activity that we sort of have in our everyday yes. lives it's about finding the lesson finding your perspective of it and then passing that on to children but um we're extremely grateful for your time mandy if anyone's got any other questions um and or would like to reach you uh, where else can they find you? Um, so you can find me at Mandy with an I at makersempire.com. And I'd also suggest jumping on to makersempire.com, our website. If you're interested in having a look there, you can also find me <laughs> on the website. Wonderful, Mandy. We're so grateful for your time and look forward to the, to the next chat, hopefully in the not too distant future. Take care. Yeah. We'll speak soon. Thanks. Thank you so much for having me, Rachel. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye.